All right, welcome back again today, ladies and gents. And what a chaotic 24 hours it has been. Just a couple of things we're going to talk about today. So obviously, we talked yesterday about PayPal and the account freezes, liquidity crisis, misinformation, fines, and everything else. We talked about how my account is still frozen. That's a quick update, it's still frozen as of today. Now we've got an issue with Kanye West and his bank account being closed. We've had outages right across Australia, the banking system. We've got the central bank losing an absolute fortune. There is just so much going on. Uh, so let's jump right into it then. So here is the big headline of the day then. JP Morgan Chase Bank cuts ties with Kanye West after anti-Semitic comments. And it was actually really hard to review this and get to the bottom of it because I had to try and find these anti-Semitic comments, which was very, very difficult. So we'll get into all of that in a moment. But firstly, I just want to um, show the correlation with what we talked about yesterday and what we've talked about for quite a few months here now is that, you know, it's judge and jury over misinformation. PayPal in, in yesterday's video decided that they were going to be judge and jury and fine people $2,500 anytime they breach what PayPal considered misinformation. So what is JP Morgan actually saying? Well, they've issued a letter, which I'll show you the letter in a moment, but in effect, they are saying that Kanye West is, is canceled. It's like their own sort of sanction against Kanye and they have canceled him and they've told him that he's got basically four weeks to get a new bank account. Otherwise, that is it. His bank account will be frozen in four weeks and they're going to mail him a, a check uh, and they said not to make any transactions a few days before that closure. Now, as you know, I've had two of my bank accounts that were closed, well, frozen slash closed, disappeared at the very same time. I never found out why, even when I really tried to get to the bottom of it, there was still no reason why. Now, of course, I have my own theories on it. I think it was because of my great reset video, as well as when I exposed bail-in law, which before I had exposed that, no one had ever talked about that before. And, and now we see it all over YouTube and other social platforms and forums and things like that. But this was not a good thing for the banking industry because they didn't want people to know about bail-in law. And if you're not familiar with it, I'll touch upon it at the end of the video. I've just got a couple of paragraphs to explain what it is. But sometimes when you go out and you do certain things, and by the way, I'm not defending Kanye in any way. I don't even know what he said specifically. I found some of the comments. And you've got to ask the question, if he had made these comments five years ago, would we be in the same situation today? And I think possibly not not defending his comments, not even getting into that because it was very hard to find out what he said anyway. I did find out and I'm going to show you what he says. And getting back to the bank account aspect, when I had my accounts frozen and I had, like I mentioned, two frozen, another one was um, subsequently closed thereafter. For no reason, the bank said on the third account, we don't have to give you a reason. We just don't want your business. And I looked into it. My lawyer or attorney, if you're in America, looked into it. And it is perfectly legal for a bank to just close your account because it is a private institution. So they, there is, I mean, obviously there's regulations around the banking, but the regulations state that if they don't want your business, they can close it down. Now, here's the next thing that I found. When I tried to open my business account elsewhere, and I've actually done this recently, I started applying in August, right? So we're in October now. Started applying in August, found a bank that would open a new business account for me after a lot of different attempts. And then what they said was, here's all the paperwork, this is what you need to do. I filled in all the paperwork. Then they said, we'll get you an appointment. So by the time I'd started the process to got the appointment with the advisor, it was around about three, three and a half weeks, something like that. Then they said, okay, it's gonna take up to six weeks to open the account. So imagine that, that if you're, let's say you're Kanye here, and you've been told you've got four weeks to open a new account. Well, how's that gonna work? Because in my case, that was around 10 weeks, nine to 10 weeks to open a new account. So how is that gonna work? Four weeks is a very short period of time. And of course, they're saying it's due to brand damage. They don't wanna be associated with it. But let me ask you this, who do I bank with? Who does, let's say you go to your local farm shop or you, know, you go to your local store or whatever, who do they bank with? You have no idea. 
I have no idea. So is this really what they are saying it's all about? Or is this political in nature? Is this just more cancel culture? I think it's a little bit of both. And you definitely have to tread very carefully around certain subjects at the moment. And that is something that Kanye does not do very well at all. He just literally just says whatever he thinks. And some people love him for that, other people really don't like him for that at all. But the other thing you've got to think about is who is actually going to take his business now? If JP Morgan have gotten rid of him and you think of the amount of money he puts through that account, if they've gotten rid of him, who else is going to take him on as a client after all? And, and honestly, it is hundreds, if not thousands of articles that have come out saying the same thing about him, that he's a, you know, a Hitler lover and all this sort of stuff. Now, some of this stuff I've looked into it where it says, um, you know, he says he loves, loved Adolf Hitler. I can't find any evidence for this anywhere on the Internet. I've done Google searches, which brought up all the same things, just people saying that he, he, he's a lover. Uh, and then it says accused of being a lover. Well, where is the evidence for that? As always, you've got to provide evidence is, is my uh, thoughts and opinion if you're going to make a claim like that. So if I see a video and I see his lips moving and he's saying that, then there's my evidence. It's done. If I see, um, you know, maybe hear an audio recording that was a secret recording and it's him saying that, there's the evidence. But just because a lot of media outlets are saying that he, he loves Hitler and the Nazis and all this other stuff, it doesn't make it true. So this is the actual letter that he got from JP Morgan. And uh, it says, we're sending this letter to confirm our recent discussion that JP Morgan Chase Bank has decided to end its banking relationship with Yeezy and its affiliated entities. To provide the company with sufficient time to transition to another financial institution, we will continue to main the accounts until 21st November. Well, again, that is simply not enough time, I would say, to avoid any transaction delay. OK, so I've already talked about all of this, but they've just sort of ended with, we ask that you act promptly to transfer your business to another financial institution before November 21st. He shared a screenshot with P Diddy and this said, this ain't a game before continuing. I'm gonna use you as an example to show the Jewish people that told you to call me that no one can threaten or influence me. Now, I just want you to drop a comment below as to whether you think that is anti-Semitism or not. A Meta spokesman then released a statement to CNN Business on Saturday, explaining that West Post was deleted for violating the company's policies and a restriction was placed on his account. However, per CNN, it did not specify what was objectionable about the content or what kind of restriction was imposed. So you see, it's not just a simple case of one post here. It seems to be multiple post that he's been making. And again, I went on to Google and I, I typed in what were the anti-Semitic comments that Kanye West made. And these were all of the articles that came up. And this was the main sort of post here. So it's this was the tweet that he put out and deleted. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew also. You guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. So that is what was considered the hate speech, the highly offensive speech. Now, if you are uh, Jewish yourself, I would like to just know from you, um, what do you think about that tweet? Do you consider that anti-Semitic and hate speech towards Jewish people or not? I would be very interested to know your opinion on that. Now, I just wanted to show you a couple of headlines from the media then and what they are saying. So they're saying Kanye West live rapper now accused of praising Hitler as JP Morgan locks account over anti-Semitic tweets. Now, I can't actually find any of these tweets or any content of him praising Hitler. So if you have got that, please drop it in the comments so that I can see that because I would be interested to know if these head headlines are legitimate or if they are just trying to really make this um, a lot worse than it already is. Now let's move on to the next topic then and that is OSCO payment system outage. Millions of Australian bank customers are 
affected. So this is industry-wide issue they're saying here, delaying the processing of some payments. Now, let me tell you why I think this is a little bit suspicious. And that's because the Reserve Bank of Australia reported a loss of $37 billion and plans to cut dividends to the Treasury. So we've had all of this sort of coming out at the same time. So this is the Reserve Bank's role in shoring up Australia's economy during the COVID pandemic has seen it post an accounting loss for the 21 to 22 year of almost $37 billion, leaving it with negative equity. And this is why I say you've got to be very, very careful with your money and with your banking because you just don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And whenever I see this, you know, outage, this coincidence at the same time as record losses are reported and all oh, government shoring up financial institutions and everything else, you know, I, I tend to be a little skeptical as I am with a lot of things. I just don't, I do believe in coincidences, but I'm pretty good at knowing when something's a coincidence and when it's not. And remember, you can easily have your bank account closed. So look at this, Barclays closed my account, but where's the cash? Yeah, I can relate to this person because that's what Barclays did to me as well. So you've got all of these articles about banks closing their accounts. This was another one, Washington. A federal judge dismissed a lawsuit against Bank of America, leaving an anonymous but well-known international figure without answers why the bank closed his account after 34 years as a customer. Furthermore, an express provision of the BANA agreement allows for either party to close the account at any time and for any reason. Collier said the man and his daughter, John Doe of Florida and Jane, they're obviously um, fictitious names, of Georgia should have sued Bank of America National Association, not its holding company, Bank of America Corporation. She refused to let them amend their complaint, finding that the bank is under no obligation to explain why it closed their accounts in 2015. See how long these things take to get to trial. Another one then, my bank closed my checking account without telling me. So this was HSBC, which is in a lot of trouble itself at the moment over um, Mexican drug cartel money laundering charges. Here's another one for you. A Northwich business owner has slammed his bank after they closed his account and left him with no access to thousands of pounds of his own money. And by the way, I'm showing you the flip side here. So people don't just think, oh, Neil's just showing us all the very negative stuff. There is sometimes an explanation for these closures. So this one was due to safeguarding, which he said he knew nothing about. From December last year, they were sending us letters, apparently asking us as a business that we need to do something online. I don't remember seeing these letters and neither does my wife. When I phoned them up, I was shocked when they told me my account had been closed. Oh, and it wasn't just closed, there was 4,400 pounds in the account at the time. Now, I said I'd mention just bail-in law and what it is. So just a couple of points and key takeaways for you on bail-in law. Big banks were deemed too big to fail following the financial crisis of 2007 to 8, resulting in government bailouts at the expense of taxpayers. Financial reforms ushered in with the Dodd-Frank Act eliminated bailouts and opened the door to bail-in. Bail-ins allow banks to convert debt into equity to increase their capital requirements. So this is the bit you need to pay attention to. And we actually saw this a lot in 2003 in Cyprus. I think we've got, yeah, here we go, in 2013, sorry, in Cyprus, which requires shareholders and creditors to take on some of the costs. Well, why? Why would you or I need to take on the cost? Um, it, it's crazy. So how does it work then? Let me just show you this example. In 2013, bondholders in Cyprus banks and depositors with more than 100,000 euros in their accounts were forced to write off a portion of their holdings. In other words, the money was stolen. They're, they're using some interesting language here. So bailouts versus bail-in. So a bailout, government injection of money, bail-in, private injection of money. No, it's your money in the bank account. It's savers money. Bailout, taxpayer assumption of risk, bail-in, creditor assumption of risk. So you are the creditor, that's what they're not saying. Uh, bailout designed to appease creditors, design, uh, bail-in is designed to appease taxpayers. Well, not really, because who are the, the creditors? They are the taxpayers, so it's complete nonsense. And finally, we'll talk about this tomorrow, but a very hot CPI just came in for the USA yet again, driven by 
energy. No surprise there. I keep laughing every single month when I hear these commentators, experts saying, deflation, we're going into deflation um, now. And they've been saying it for the last year, 18 months, deflation. No, we're not seeing deflation. We might start to see disinflation soon. In fact, it's almost inevitable as these energy prices start to level off, but we're not going into deflation yet for quite a while. So that is it for today. Let me know what you thought in the comments below about all of this censorship, about what's been happening with PayPal and a lot of these other platforms just censoring people, misinformation fines, um, Kanye West's account being frozen by JP Morgan and, and uh, these outages in Australia and losing all this money. Let me know in the comments below what you think of all of this today. Apart from that, uh, thanks for watching. Take care. God bless you and your family. And I will see you tomorrow for the weekly walk and talk.